Hi guys, this is Viraj. I'm a project research assistant at the GPU Center of Excellence at IIT Bombay. The GPU Center of Excellence at IIT Bombay is responsible for spreading the word of supercomputing, parallel programming, and different paradigms in computing, including a very recent embedded supercomputing in India. We have conducted various sessions and training workshops across India and plan to do so in the near future. Today what we are here is for discussing about the latest trend in supercomputing which is the embedded supercomputing. So let's get started. So we have here the Jetson TK1. It is the first world's first embedded supercomputing platform that is brought to us by NVIDIA. Let me introduce this platform to you. The NVIDIA Jetson TK1 development board is a fully featured device ideal for software development within the Linux environment. Standard connectors are used to access the Tegra features and interfaces, enabling a highly flexible and extensible development environment. Let us now go to the unboxing of Jetson. So here we are, this is the Jetson TK1 board. With this, we get three accessories. This is the adapter. This is the power cable for the adapter. And this is the USB cable which is used to flash OS onto the Jetson TK1 board. So here we have the Jetson TK1 board. Now before starting to work on the board, let us understand the few interfaces which are given on the board. We will start with the RS232 interface. Then we have the HDMI interface which is used to connect it to a screen. Then we have a USB 3.0 interface. We have an Ethernet interface. These are audio jacks. We come over here to find a SATA power cable. Then here we have the power power in for the powering the board. We have here the SD card interface. We here have the JTAG debugger interface. This can be used for connecting any kind of sensors or uh, general purpose input output pins, switches, relays, etc. Next, we have these three pins. These three pins are very important. The first one is from here is the power pin, power button. The second one is the reset button. And the third one is the force recovery button. Now the force recovery button is very important when you want to put or flash an OS onto the board, which we are going to use now. Okay, let's take the board and let's flash some OS in this. Let's get started with flashing the OS. What we have done at GCOE is that we have created some really easy to use shell scripts which will help you install the OS onto the Jetson TK1 board in a very hassle free way. So let's start, open your browser and uh, navigate to this GitHub page. It is uh, www.github.com slash gcoe dash iitb slash jetson tk1. So this is our collection of shell scripts which will help you uh, work on jetson. So let's uh, quickly clone this repository. So how do we do that? Let's just copy this SSH clone URL. Go to terminal. Take a directory. Name repo. There is nothing here. Then I use the command git clone and I paste the URL. 
and I start clo cloning it. So you can see that all the scripts have not. So the first question the script asks is do you wish to download the OS files for Jetson? To this I am going to answer a no but before this what I could do is I will first copy the files to the directory. So I just open one more instance of a terminal and since I already have those files let me see the files. Okay. So we have we have these two files here. Now in case you don't have the files, you can answer yes and it will download those files in your directory. Since I've already downloaded the files, I'll just simply copy. So let me just do that. So I'm going to use copy Tegra. And Tegra Linux in the folder that is just made. We'll just wait till the time this files copy. Okay, I guess the files are copied. We can check that out by using this command. So we can see that now we have these two files copied and this is the shell script from the repository. So let's just close this instance and now we can answer okay we do not need to download. The moment you answer no the processing will start. This is going to take some amount of time. Now since I already had these files with me, I didn't have to spend a lot, a lot of time downloading it but in case you are interested in really working with Jetson, I recommend that you keep some copies of the various versions of the OS and um, just store it so that you can switch between the versions. Okay, the script has again asked us a question and this is have you put Jetson in recovery mode? Now before answering this question let me explain you what do you mean by recovery mode. Now recovery mode is a mode in which 
you can actually flash OS onto the device and there is a procedure by which you put the board in the recovery mode. Now I will be taking you back to the board and showing you how to do it. So as you see that I have used uh, the mini USB connector to connect the board to my Ubuntu computer using the USB cable. And now we are going to use two of these three buttons. So the first button is the force recovery button and the second button is the reset button. To put the board in the force recovery mode, just hold down the force recovery button, which I can show like this. And now just, just press the reset button once. As you had seen, the LED or blinked and that was an indication that now it has gone into the force recovery mode. Another way of checking whether it has gone in the force recovery mode is having a new instance of a terminal here. And let me just increase the font. We have a command to check whether you have the Jetson connected to your machine now in the recovery mode so i do less usb wipe it with grep and search for nvidia the moment i execute this command i should get something like a bus 001 device which is from the nvidia corporation and once you get this kind of an output you're certain that now the jetson is in the recovery mode now we can answer that question. Let me just close this terminal instance and answer. Okay, have you put the Jetson in recovery mode? Yes. And I press enter. Now you can see that the flashing procedure has started. This is the file system getting made. So the, the way in which this happens is that a file system gets made onto the host computer, which is the Ubuntu machine. And then the contents are flashed onto the board. So now you're almost done. You've done all the required configurations and you just have to sit back and uh, look at the script. If not, grab a cup of coffee and let the script do its work. Oh, so we see now that the target has been flashed successfully. So it gives you an instruction that reset the board to boot from the internal EMMC. It took somewhere around 171 seconds for the flashing. So here we have the Jetson board, which has been, which is flashed now. We, we can work on it, code, for doing that, we need a couple of peripherals. First and foremost, we need to connect it to a keyboard. So, what I have over here is a USB transceiver. This is used to connect the Jetson to a wireless keyboard and a mouse. So, I'm going to put that in the USB adapter. In case you want more USB ports, 
you can connect a hub here so that you have access to four or six USB ports. The second most important accessory we have is the HDMI to VGA converter. Now a lot of people do have HDMI screens, so for them you can easily connect your HDMI monitor, connect this to an HDMI monitor using an HDMI cable. In my case I am going to use this HDMI to VGA cable, so let me connect this here. They are all set now, we just connect to the screen and uh, reset the board. Now this is the Ubuntu 14.04 version which is running on the Jetson TK1 board. One important thing is that in case you are prompted for to log in to a user, the default user is of the name Ubuntu and the password is also Ubuntu that is U V U N T U. So just keep a note of that. That's all for the video. I Viraj Parte on behalf of GCOE at IIT Bombay would want to uh, thank you all for watching this video and please do like, subscribe and comment in case you have doubts. In case you want to get in touch with us, you can log on to gcoe-iitb.in and uh, you will find a lot of resources on the website, resources for embedded supercomputing, parallel programming, parallel programming using MATLAB, use of CUDA, OpenCV, OpenCL, OpenMPI and these kind of uh, approaches to parallel programming. So see you again.